We often are presented with teeth that are non-restorable and we will anesthetize the patient and try to remove the teeth as atraumatically as possible. Here I'm using the physics forceps, um, which consists of two components. The beak is a shovel-shaped edge, place one to three millimeters subgingival on the palatal aspect, and the bumper is placed as high up the vestibule as possible. And without squeezing the instrument whatsoever, there's no luxating, uh, I'm just simply rotating my wrist rotating my wrist and within a matter of seconds the tooth will pop. Now it's not intended to, you're not going to hear it pop, and it's not intended to remove the tooth in total, rather it's intended to luxate that tooth up and out of the socket following the arc of rotation. And I'm very carefully trying to remove this tooth in real time, removing the tooth without removing the crown, without sectioning the roots, and we have very divergent roots, as you can see. We are then going to curette, curette any infected area and evaluate the facial plate, removing any granulation. Here I've taken an extra large osteogen plug, shaping it like the root of a tooth, and simply carefully placing it into the three sockets. I'm condensing it firmly, but not crushing the material. It's not amalgam and I'd like to place it at or slightly above the crest of the ridge. I will then place some interrupted sutures and my suturing technique is always consistent from crest to facial, crest to palatal. Just do some interrupted sutures. Now I don't care about primary closure because epithelium will grow a half a millimeter to a millimeter a day but I want to evaluate the band of attached gingiva. I always take a radiograph and you can see immediately post-operatively the uh, material. It has some radiolucency to it, but over time, in a quick three to four months, you'll be able to objectively determine the bone turnover and prepare the site for an implant.